to the Word. Last, well, two weeks ago, we started a series called Red Letters, and we are going to attempt to go through some of the red letters that's in our New Testament. Red letters obviously signify the words that Jesus spoke as he walked this earth. Two weeks ago, we tried to decide and discover who Jesus Christ is, if these really are words that we need to follow and we need to learn and we need to, to govern our life by. And then last week, we talked about how Jesus started his ministry with the simple phrase, come. And he asked you to come. And that's all he asked. Today, we're going to move uh, into another aspect of what Jesus talked about. And I believe this is one of the hardest ones that we ever have to deal with. And it's simply a one-word title today, forgive. 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 Matthew chapter 18, verse 35 is the very ending, but it's also going to be the very beginning. This is where we're going to end the message today, but we're also starting the message in Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. This is what the Word of God says. It says, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Lord, we love you and we thank you. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this, uh, this burden. I thank you for this responsibility. And I pray, God, that you would allow me to speak your word without anything hindering me, God. I pray, Father, that I would be your vessel, God, and you would speak through me. And I pray, Lord God, that everyone that hears this message, God, that they would hear it for themselves. And, Father, you would turn and you would change hearts and you would mend the broken hearts. And, God, you would soften hearts that we can understand what you are talking about and what you're trying to teach us, God. Your cross is the symbol of forgiveness, and I pray, Lord God, that you hide me behind that. Touch us. Take away all hindrances for the next few moments. This is your day. These are your people. I am your vessel. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little asterisk out here and tell you this, that I will not teach you a comprehensive all-inclusive message of forgiveness. This is the message that a um, preacher could preach for 25 years and still never hit every aspect of what forgiveness is. But what I am going to do is try to whet your appetite to learn more about what forgiveness is so that we can grow closer to God. And to do that, I want to open up with two stories. There's a story that I found that I thought was somewhat amusing. The first one is this. Carla Barton, founder of the American Red Cross, was reminded one day of a vicious deed that someone had done to her years before. Before she acted, as she had never even heard of the incident, the individual says, don't you remember it? Carla said, no. I distinctly remember forgetting it. I want you to let that sink in for a moment. Here's a better one. I think that will reach us a little bit better. Two little boys had quarreled. But the next morning, Johnny took his cap and headed for Bobby's house again. Surprised, an older member of the family said teasingly, What? Going to play with him again? I thought you quarreled only last evening and you were never going to have anything to do with each other again. Funny memory you have. Johnny looked a little sheeplessly, dug his toes into the carpet for a minute, then flashed a satisfied smile as he hurried away. Oh, Bobby and me's good forgetters. I want you to think about that for a moment. Bobby and me is good forgetters. You see, there's power in our words and actions that we portray in front of other people. But there is unexplainable and immeasurable power when there is truth and love to those words that we speak and the actions that we take. Jesus showed us this. He modeled this, and he commissioned us to live like he did as he walked the earth. This was his purpose. The reason he walked the earth, to reconcile mankind to his heavenly father. His purpose was to bring, to offer, and to model forgiveness. He showed us how. 2 Corinthians 
verses 5, 18 through 20 says this. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That's very important. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making his appeal through us. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And then you can go over to Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Peter says in Romans chapter 5, and this is the passage translation, and even more than that, we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to God all because of Christ. We are have a, a triumphant joy that we live because we are reconciled to God. And then we go back to the very first scripture that we talked about. And the Bible says that we are ambassadors. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus did something for us that needed to be done and strengthened God's word. You, you see, it's how many people, I'm not one of these, but how many people can read instructions and just go about and do exactly what the instructions and you get to the end exactly how you want to get to the end? Some of us can do that. Some of us like to go to YouTube. You can tell me, but as you tell me, I need you to show me what bolt to pull out so the whole thing don't fall on my head. I need you to show me how to put it back together once I get everything undone. Because you know how many of you are like me. When you get stuff undone, you start out putting things in particular areas. So you, well, this is going on the top. And, this is, and before you realize it, you've got 14 areas and you're like... I know this one goes on the top, but I have no idea where anything else goes. And you're just trying to, how many men, come on, let's be honest. How many men put something together when you got done? You had about three extra bolts that were not back into where it was going. Hallelujah. Right? Every one of us has. We're like, please, God, don't let this be one of those things that are very important. Let it be something on the outside that's just for, for looks. Don't let it be structural. And this is how we are. And so what happens is, is, is God was telling his people how to live. But they needed somebody to show them so they can base their life off of him in walks the son of the living God, Jesus, to show them what it was to live a life and reconcile people back to the Father. He put words into actions or action into words in front of us to show us what it is to be truly to forgive and to love. Jesus showed us what it was to truly forgive someone. I believe that you cannot have true forgiveness without love. That is my personal belief. You cannot truly forgive somebody on the outside of love. Love has to be in the midst of it. And if you do not love, you cannot truly forgive someone. Some of you might want to argue that with me. That is fine. We can argue it. We're not going to do it now. But you cannot truly forgive somebody if it's not done through love. You cannot do it. Jesus taught, he preached, and he lived and reinforced the concept and action of forgiveness to his disciples that he taught them for three and a half years. He showed them what the love of the Father was, the way he acted with everybody that came around him. You see, forgiveness has a power that we overlook. I found this study, I thought it was kind of interesting. It says, since the 1980s, Forgiveness has been a significant focus of psychological research. Did you know this? I did not. In the following decades, researchers discovered the therapeutic value of being a person who forgives easily. Research shows that people who forgive more often demonstrate these four things. They demonstrate stronger relationships. 
somebody that forgives easily has emotional health. They are slower to become angry. And they have a clearer conscience than those that do not forgive easily. Since the 1980s, studies have been done, and this is what it shows. Even though forgiveness is not governed by these examples, even though the forgiveness that we're talking about is not governed and nor do we want to go after forgiveness because it's going to put these things in our life, the examples are a good byproduct of the experiences in your life. Not to mention being in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes it's hard for us to put our relationship with Jesus and forgiveness in the same boat because we want to put his forgiveness in this boat and our forgiveness in this boat we don't want to put them together but Jesus taught us and I got some scriptures we're going to go through today Jesus taught us you cannot separate the two Jesus had a lot to say about forgiveness and every time he spoke about forgiveness it came from a place of love not a place of self-servingness if you want to use that word Jesus never forgave somebody else so it would be good for himself. He forgave somebody and he forgave all people because they needed it in their life. He didn't ask them for anything. He didn't ask them for this. He f- f- freely forgave them for everything that they did. He did this from a place. He knowingly, he knows where we are and he knows that we need it. He knows that we need to live in a place of forgiveness. We need to experience forgiveness in our life. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14. The Bible says, If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's hard. How can a loving God do everything that he did? And if I just got something going on, he's not going to. The Bible says, and I've told you before, I, I, I believe the beginning and the end, everything in the middle of the misprint words and everything. I believe that everything the Bible says is true and he meant what he said. This is what I believe. You cannot argue anything with me. Well, I, I take that back. You can. But I'm going to tell you this. You have to show me where it's different in here. Because if it's not different in here, this is how I base my life. This is what I base my judgment on. This is what I base my standard on. If it's anywhere else outside of these scriptures, you have a losing battle on your hand. Because this word is true. This word is inspired. Every word was was inspired by God's spirit. Now I want you to, to listen to this. That word forgive in this verse I'm going to try to pronounce it again. My Georgia accent's going to come out. A figamy. Something in that aspect. That is the Greek word that's translated forgive. But it's so funny because it's also the Greek word translated in Matthew chapter 4 verse 20. When Jesus called his disciples. And as he called his disciples, the Bible says they left their nets behind. The same word that is translated forgive in this verse is the same word that's translated as left or leave in the other verses. It is translated 146 times in the New Testament. Over 119 times in the gospel, this word is used. And it simply means this, to go away leaving something behind. To leave one by not taking him as a companion. You see, when God says that we have to forgive those that trespass against us, he is telling us we have to leave that feeling. We have to leave that trespass behind. We cannot take that trespass as a companion as we live our life. The Bible says that we have to leave it behind. That's what the Bible says. Can you imagine You're standing in a line, and right beside you, you see Jesus, and you see Jesus with a long line of baggage. You say, Jesus, what's that long line of baggage? Well, you bring in yours, I'm bringing mine. You don't like to think of it that way, do you? But when we don't forgive somebody, that's exactly what the Scripture says. If you don't forgive, he won't forgive. You say, we don't want to hear that because God is a loving God. God is a, a graceful God. But the Bible says that if you don't, he won't. 
Luke 17, verse 3 and 4 says, Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. That's what Scripture says. It doesn't say you need to think about it. The Bible says you must if he asks you for your forgiveness, you must forgive him. This is what I'm saying. You cannot forgive outside of love. But as you're looking at the people that's in your life and outside of your life and not even part of your life, and you look at them, you have to look at them with the love of God through your eyes and see what he sees. And when he does something, when she does something wrong to you, you have to forgive them because you are in charge. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And you have been given the ministry of reconciliation, bringing people back to the cross to have a relationship with his father. That is why we are here, to forgive. But as each of us have been on both sides of the equation of the conversation, we have to look at what is causing, allowing forgiveness to come to be applied to my account. Every one of us has wronged somebody in our life. I will venture to say we might have wronged somebody yesterday. Some of us might even be bold enough and wrong to somebody this morning before you came to church. And on the other side of that coin, you've been wrong this week. Somebody said something about you. Somebody didn't hold up their end of the bargain. Somebody didn't do this, and you feel, you feel betrayed. You feel let down. And now you have a decision to make. Am I going to allow that to weigh me down? Or when they come and ask forgiveness, am I going to forgive them? What if they never come and ask forgiveness? Do you realize that Jesus forgave you before you even asked him? Now, I'm not saying you're walking in salvation before you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's not what I'm saying. The Bible says that he died for our sins. So if he went to the cross before we ever walked this earth, he forgave us before we asked him. But we cannot walk in that relationship until we do. That is what love is. He was looking for a way to give you forgiveness. And now we are part of that ministry ourselves to forgive those that have wronged us and to ask repentance for those that we have wronged. You cannot deny this. Well, everything I say, I always come up, you can. But forgiveness is liberating on both sides. When you lay down the weight of unforgiveness, you feel liberated, you feel free. And when somebody offers you true forgiveness and you understand they forgave you and, and everything that you've done wrong is put to the side, you feel liberated and light and you feel there is something that, that comes inside of you that allows you to live free, allows you to live joyful. It's like, like what Jesus said, John 10, 10, he is, he is love. And then he says, I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. How can we live more abundantly if we're living in unforgiveness? It is not up to us if repentance is genuine. You see, how many of you say, I'm going to forgive you, but you don't really sound like you're sorry. You said it, but you don't really, you need to, you need to change your tone just a little bit. It's not up to us if repentance is genuine. What is up to us if his forgiveness is genuine? We cannot control if their hearts are right. What we can control is how we act in front of them and how we act towards them. We can control and we can decide if the forgiveness that we're offering somebody is genuine. And I'm telling you right now, we are the best people to offer the so much counterfeit uh, forgiveness that we think is genuine. We don't even know what genuine forgiveness is all about anymore. We got all the dollar store imita uh, 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 imitations and everything else. We got all the colors and everything else. But God knows if your heart is genuine, he knows if you've forgiven out of the love that he has put in your heart. How many of you as kids, Lord knows I've been there many times, got into a fight with your sibling or to your best friend or whatever, whoever it might be, your cousin, maybe you smacked your aunt because you and your aunt are the same age, you know. Sometimes that happens, right? 
What if? How many times has, has your mom or dad grabbed you, or your grandma, or your aunt grabbed you and said, now y'all need to stand right here. Y'all need to hug each other. Y'all need to forgive each other, kiss each other, and make up. How many of you ever had to go through that? By God, I know I had too many times. And you're hugging them, and as you're hugging them, you know, you're digging your, your knuckle into their backs. Yeah, I, I forgive you. I love you. Urgh. Wait till mom ain't looking. Boy, I'm going to knock you out. Right? We've all been in that situation. But here's the thing, and this is, this is taking all the jokes out of it. If you're honest, that's how you forgive people today. Because the Bible says so when God's looking at you like this, you better forgive. If I don't forgive, I'm not going to forget forgiveness. I, I know I need forgiveness because i got some stuff coming in my life that's just making me do some dumb stuff. I need forgiveness. Oh, let me hug him. And you cannot forgive without love. You can't do it. Oh, you can say the words, but you say the words and you hold on to everything you forgive. I'm going to put this right back here. I'm going to use it later. In Mark chapter 11, verse 25, it says, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Listen to the passion. And whenever you stand praying, if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. When you begin to think about forgiveness and you begin to talk about forgiveness and you begin to look at what forgiveness really is, it's a little bit harder than some words that come out of your mouth. You know, I, I probably said this many times, but me and Becca, we were together about a year before I told her I loved her. And y'all, you guys like, man, y'all, what, you stupid, what you talking about? But see, I never threw around that word love. Even though I felt it, even though I knew it, I didn't say it. Until it was in concrete. And she would be mad at me. You ask her, Mo, she'll tell you, man, she's about ready to knock me upside the head with a sledgehammer because I wasn't going to say it. She's like, I love you. And we're on the phone, I love you. I'm like, all right, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> ask her. <laughs> Just stay in whack. You know, she might have some bent up rage, you know. This message is for her. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I wouldn't throw that word out. But we throw the word forgiveness out all the time. I forgive you. Do you really? Do you understand what the word means? To let go and to not take it with you anymore. To leave it behind. That's what forgive means. And if you're on a path following Jesus, he's not going to bring you back to these faults because you've left them behind. Forgiveness is not an option if we are to live a life to fulfill the purpose and to live by the precepts of Scripture. It's not an option if we're going to live by this book that God gave us. It's not an option for us to forgive. It is a commandment that we forgive. It is who we are that we forgive. Jesus never said forgiving would be easy. And we all know that because sometimes it takes us a minute to forgive somebody. That's human nature. It's okay. I'm not saying you be a doormat, let everybody walk all over you and say, oh, I forgive you, I forgive you. Here's some more fairy dust, I forgive you. That's not what I'm saying. It's not easy sometimes forgiving somebody. But if you begin to go back to the scriptures and begin to understand what Jesus Christ is saying, if you don't forgive, you can't come to me and ask forgiveness because you're wasting your breath until you release it out of your life. And truly forgive that person. That's what scripture says. Jesus never said it would be easy. Forgiveness is a must. And he shows us through his life that love would always lead to forgiveness. Luke 6 verse 37. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. The other two says, don't do this and it won't. But the last one says, you do this and it will. 
Don't judge, don't condemn, but forgive, and I'm going to forgive you. We want what we want, and sometimes we're unwilling to open up and allow because, face it, especially us men, let's just, all, all the women are gone, we're just talking amongst ourselves. Sometimes it's hard for us to open up and become vulnerable to other people because it makes us look weak. It makes us look like we're not in control. It makes us look like we're just some pushover. And if I let them get away with it this time, and see, that's our mindset. They're getting away with it this time. They're going to do it again. But see, it's not up to us if repentance is genuine. It's up to us if forgiveness is genuine. It's not them getting away with it. They have to live their life, and they will stand before God and take, make an account for everything they said and all the idle words that they said and everything that they've done. It's up to you to do the same thing. And God's going to say, why didn't you forgive Derek for this? Why didn't you forgive Stephen for that? Well, I did. I said it. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, his word is sharper than two-edged sword, cutting deep. He knows the intents of our heart. He knows. He can look through the words without even seeing the words. Before the words leave our mouth, he knows what's on our tongue. This is the God that we serve. Matthew 18, 21, Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I will forgive him? As many as seven times, verse 22 says, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. You see, this is important because if you knew what the cultural and the religious teachings were back there, the religious leaders would tell you that three times to forgive somebody is, is sufficient enough to cover. So the religious leaders were saying, you need to forgive them three times and you're okay. So what Peter does is he, he, he doubles it. He says, well, what if I forgive them seven times? Is that enough? And, and I heard somebody say this, and it really struck a chord with me. He said, you know what? If you really begin to look at this verse on the flip side, now we're, we're putting our opinion into this. What if Peter's not saying, God, how many times must I forgive him? Is, is seven enough? Is, is that good enough to cover the sins? And, and this individual said, you know what I believe Peter was doing? Was saying, how many times do I have to forgive him before I can stop and take things into my own hands? And you begin to look at your life. How many times have you done that? Well, the Bible says seven times. The perfect number. I'm going to give him seven times. And then Jesus says seven times 70. So we said, okay, 490. Okay, I, okay, that's a lot, but, you know, I'm going to get through this really quick because this is a really bad person. Before, before lunchtime, I'm going to be up at 800. And we're we're going to be good. I'm going to be ready to lay hands on him real hard. You see, Jesus' response was beyond anything that disciples ever heard and something that we need to hear today. When he was saying 7 times 70, he was saying that the number was insignificant. This is what um, R.C. Sproul said. When Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive, Jesus essentially told him as many times as it takes. Y'all don't want to hear that, do you? No, y'all don't want to hear that. How many times do you forgive your brother? As many times as it takes. Why are you here? I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. So how many times do you need to forgive him? As many times as it takes. But, but you don't understand what this individual has done. You don't understand the, 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 the remorse. You don't understand what they have done to my family. Are you, are you really saying as many times as it takes? Who are you? I done told you I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. As many times as it takes. You see, it goes to the point to where we begin to look at God's forgiveness in our life against all the stuff that we've done in our forgiveness to other people and all the stuff that they've done. And yet, we have nothing we can offer this individual. As much forgiveness as you can put in that person's life, when their life ends, there is nothing you can do but bring flowers to the celebration of life service that you're going to have. You do not give them eternal life. You can give them absolutely nothing. Oh, sure, you can give the condolences to the family for just a little bit. And before you realize it, you're not even thinking about them anymore. 
There is nothing you can give, but Jesus gives us eternal life. And if he forgives us for everything that we've done, why can we not forgive those that have wronged us? Forgiveness is not weighed, it's not measured by the amount of times that is exercised, but forgiveness is weighed by the intent of the heart. Christians are only capable of this type of forgiving because the Spirit of God lives in them. And He provides the ability to offer forgiveness over and over just as God forgives us over. Have you ever thought about that? You ever thought about when somebody comes and they wrong you, right? If you haven't been wronged today, give it a couple days, you'll be wronged. We all are. If not, just go to Walmart, you know, and, and, and jump in front of somebody to self-checkout or whatever. You'll be wrong, trust me. But have you ever thought about that? And I'll venture to say that there's probably not a day that goes by that if we truly look into ourselves, that's not something we have to ask Jesus Forgive me, Father. Forgive me for those bad feelings I have against that individual. God, forgive me for, for saying what I just said. Forgive me for being mean-spirited. Forgive me for all of this and forgive me for that, God. And we expect God to, to answer and listen and to pay attention to our, our, our desires and our, our forgiveness request. And yet when somebody comes up to us, she said, you ain't paid the penance yet. You need to wait a moment. You, you, you hold your role and stay right where you are. I'll let you know when you can come in back into my life. You haven't done enough yet. You know how bad you hurt me. You know how bad, how many people are not my friends anymore because of the things that you've said and the things that you've done. Do you understand what you've really done in my life? And you're sitting there. And I can see Jesus looking at you and he said, do you realize what you did to me? You sent me to the cross. I had to lay my life down for you. And you're not willing to forgive this individual of something they've done in your life. Second Corinthians says that you are a new creation. Which means I am not the same. The same God that forgave me was the same God that saved me. He's the same God that changed me, and now I live my life for him. The same way Paul said in Galatians 20, uh, 2 and 20, I am sacrificed, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. But I don't live my life for myself anymore. I live for him because of what he has done in my life, and I live to glorify him. How can I glorify and be an ambassador to him when I will not forgive my brothers and sisters for the things that I have done? And here's the thing, peeps. A lot of the unforgiveness we have in our life stem years and years back in your life, and you've built a foundation on top of that hurt and on top of all those bad things that happened, and now you have a skewed view of what forgiveness is all about. The Bible says that he has a sure foundation, and if you build upon him, nothing can ever knock over your, your foundation. Nothing can ever knock over your building. You're coming up straight. You're plumb. But when you build on a, on a foundation that's not his, you're going to be off just a little bit, and we all know that if we ever been on a boat and we're off just a half an inch from when we're supposed to go by the time we get to where we're going we have no idea where we are because they're so far off course and this is where we are I live to honor him I live now because he forgave me and of all I did and now I live the same way for all people to forgive them when they come against me I live this way in a world that does not like the decisions and the choices that I make that I stand up for right, I stand up for, for God, I stand up for righteousness and holiness. I live in a world that all they want to do is push me down and, and put their morals on top of me and, and have me judge by the way they judge. But the way they judge, as soon as I change just a little bit, now they're judging me again and I never can satisfy the world because that's how the enemy is. He is the author of confusion. And you wonder why in your life you don't have the victory that you want and the victory that you need is because you're following the confusing air around you. I choose to forgive. I choose to let it go. 
You see, here's the thing. When I go back to my beautiful wife, I chose her. And she was going to be my wife if she liked it or not. That's just how it's going to be. She ain't got no choice in the matter. And like it or not, I'm going to be her husband. I chose her. And I don't want to do life any other way than without her. And the same way I chose her is the same way your father in heaven chose you to live in relationship with his son so you can understand what it is to live a true life. Anything outside of him is a life of, of, well, we're not going to say. I choose to lead people to the cross. I do not choose myself, but I choose Jesus. This is what forgiveness is all about. This is forgiveness. Christians with forgiving hearts not only do not limit the number of times that they forgive. This was, this was very fascinating to me when I found this. They continue to forgive with as much grace the thousandth time as they did the first. Do you understand? Did you hear what I said? Christians, with the Spirit of God living in you, no matter what's going on, you have the same grace and the same passion the thousandth time, the millionth time as you did the very first time you gave forgiveness to somebody because something they did in your life. That's what a Christian does. Psalms 103 and 10. He does not deal with us according to our sins. Can somebody say amen to that? Could you imagine... If y'all walked in this church next Sunday and all these walls were redone in chalkboard paint. And as you walked in, you got a piece of chalk. And I said, okay, y'all, this is, this is the service today. I need you to write every, everything you've ever done on these walls so everybody can see. How many people would walk out and never come back? There's some things you don't want people to know you did, even though God's forgiven you. But this is what happens in our lives when we don't allow things to let go. I'm glad God does not judge us or deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. This is why Jesus came. This is what he taught, and this is how he lived in front of all men. Jesus said in John chapter 13, New commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. How has he loved you? I've come in to show you. I'm not going to judge you by your wrongings. I'm not going to judge you by your iniquities. I'm not going to deal with you by your iniquities. But I'm going to remove them as far as the east is from the west. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to take you and all of your trash. I'm going to forgive and leave behind. I'm leaving them back there. I'm never going back there to pick them back up. But this is all, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. You cannot forgive without love, and you cannot love without forgiveness. You cannot live for Jesus Christ without forgiveness in your heart due to the fact that his love lives inside of you. If you live with unforgiveness, God wants to change you today. If you live because there are things that's happened in your life, God wants to move in your life today. He wants to take those burdens. He wants to bring triumphant joy back into your life. But you have to let the unforgiveness go so God can have the glory in your life. The power of forgiveness is that when a person receives it, you give that person back their life. True forgiveness comes from the heart. True forgiveness, Jesus speaks of. A fear me. A fear me. Let it go from the heart, the mouth speaks. If forgiveness does not come from the heart, it is not forgiveness. Although we never get it right 100% of the times, there's true forgiveness. Where true forgiveness lives, it is kept alive by true love and by pure love. The acts that brought forgiveness close begin to disappear. And they show us, and they show up, let's, what, what are you saying, Pastor? Where true forgiveness is, the things that brought forgiveness in, the wrongdoings in your life, the bad things in your life, the bad things people have done to you, and you forgive them and forgive them and forgive them. 
the more you forgive, the less these things are going to start showing up because it's going to begin to change them on the inside the way God changed you. And this is why we are here. Forgiveness is not a blank check. It is a path to love. It erases the wrong that starts, and it starts to rewire and redirect the actions of the recipient of your forgiveness. When you truly forgive that individual, you begin to change how they see life. You begin to change how they do life. You see, the Bible does not teach that forgiveness is optional. But if we are followers of Jesus Christ, forgiveness is not about us. Even though there is something gained by offering forgiveness, it is for that person that is in need. Jesus gained nothing for forgiving you. He's already perfect. He was at the beginning. He was going to be at the end. He was always there. He gains nothing by forgiving you. But you gain everything from his forgiveness. Forgiveness is not conditional. Forgiveness is also, it does not remove the consequences. But you are not responsible, nor do you judge or nor do you divvy out the consequences to these things what this is going on is legal stuff when you forgive it you let it go you don't even worry about retribution forgiveness grace and mercy they get perverted by satan because he twists the meaning and application in our lives and over and over we hear that showing too much mercy and too much grace and extending forgiveness is enabling people for bad behavior. See, that's what, that's what the devil tries to tell you when you give them too much grace and mercy. You're just enabling them to continue doing what they're doing. I don't understand in here where Jesus talks about how forgiveness enables somebody to continue on with bad Will they do it? Yeah, some will. Is that up to you? No. What's up to you is genuine forgiveness. Ephesians 4 and 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. Along with all malice, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Derek, if you would come. Like I said, where we started, we're going to end. And where we end, we started, we're going back to Matthew chapter 18. And it's a story that we all know way too well. And it's the story of the unforgiving servant. And we know this story. And I, I was watching an individual, and he was preaching on this topic. And oh, he was preaching on this, oh, I want to say that it was back in 2011, 2012, something like that. And he was using the figures and as the unforgiving servant came up to the king, and the king says, you owe me this amount of money. And we look at it, and we say, well, that's not that, well, that's a lot of money. But back 10 years ago, when the individual was calculating it, I did not calculate it. I'm going to use his calculations. This servant owed the king over $18 billion that he could not repay. $18 billion that he could not repay. And he understood the weight of this debt. And there was nothing, I don't know about you, I got a pretty good, good gig right here, but I don't think I'm ever going to see $18 billion in my bank account over my lifetime. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't even know what $18 billion looks like. But somehow, this servant racked up a debt of 18. It was a debt that was insurmountable, something that he would never be able to pay. And as Jesus was teaching about this, he was trying to show us, listen, there's a debt that I have against you. There, there is a debt that you owe me. You will never be able to pay it off. I don't care how good you are, how much you do, and how much penance you, you cannot pay off this debt. And the Bible says that the servant fell at the feet of the king and began to beg and began to plead with the king. And the king had compassion and out of love and a true heart, he forgave the debt of the individual. The, 
story goes on. He sees somebody that worked for him, that owed him 50 bucks. And the Bible says he grabs him by the throat and shakes him. I want my money. I, you need to pay your debt. And this is how we are with forgiveness. You need to pay your debt to me. You're not going to pay it? Fine, until you can, I'm throwing you in prison. And I'm throwing you in prison until you can pay it. But how can an individual pay that debt when they can't move? How can they pay that debt when you put them in a cage? How can they pay that debt when you put them in a place that they, 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 they just can't get out of? And this is how we are, like it or not. Jesus spoke these words because he was trying to paint a picture of, of how it is, the offense we have against God Almighty and the offense people have towards us and us towards them. That debt is absolutely nothing compared to the debt that we have against God. The debt that God holds in his hand we will never be able to pay. But He freely forgives us because of the love that He has for us when we come to Him with a broken heart and seek forgiveness. So we go back to our first verse, Matthew 18, 35. So also my Heavenly Father will do every, to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. And that is the key. That is the key to victory. That is the key to rejoicefulness. That is the key for triumphant joy in your life. You have to forgive from the heart. Not from your mind. Not from your mouth. Not from your actions. Not from your eyes and overlooking. The Bible says that you have to forgive because God knew what it was going to take for you to forgive Whenever we Thank you for watching. We hope today's message has inspired and transformed your life. Want to watch past sermons? Visit our YouTube page. Just search for Maranatha Fellowship Baton Rouge. And don't forget to like our Facebook page to stay up to date on any upcoming events. God bless and have a great day.